So I want to start out this speech by saying that I love my dad. He's great. This is my dad and I love him, he's great. Now that's out of the way, I would like to say that I hate my math teacher. <laughs> this is my math teacher. I don't hate him personally, just the subject he teaches, the boring way he teaches it, and sometimes him as a person, depending on the day. If you haven't figured out by now, my dad is my math teacher. And it's a little awkward because I hate math. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of what it's like to have your dad teach a class you absolutely despise. Then I'm going to tell you why I hate said class. And then finally, we're going to talk about my life at home and what it's like to sit across the dinner table from your dad, who's also your teacher, who also knows full well you didn't get your homework done that day. Or week. Or month. I'm a procrastinator. So let's get started with the pros and cons. Pro number one, I could ask the teacher's help outside of class whenever I wanted to. That would have been a pro had I used it, but I didn't because I was stubborn and I was like, I can do it all by myself, but I was wrong. <laughs> and my grade reflected that thoroughly. <laughs> Secondly, it was convenient. Oh God, was it convenient. For me, not him. He had to do a lot of stuff for me. like. During his planning period, he'd run home and grab my math book that I frequently forgot, or my lunch. And if there was a form that needed signing right before a field trip, guess what? Five minutes before it happened, I could run up, get it signed, and then guess what? I'm going on the field trip anyway, guys. Thanks for waiting up. <laughs> and lastly, I could get away with disrupting class. Not that I ever did, but without good reason. And that reason was usually to stall so we wouldn't have homework. But that never worked because my dad, well, he was always on the ball with the whole homework thing. Which brings us to our cons. Con number one, my dad was the kind of teacher that gave homework every single day, even on days right before break. So he was by far everyone's least favorite teacher. And they took it out on me. Oh, Parker, it's spring break tomorrow. I don't want homework on spring break. Well, yeah, neither do I. Why are you complaining at me? Here's a better question. Why is it that when I get home, dad's like, Parker, do the laundry. And then I'm like, okay, and so I'm doing the laundry. Ooh, put it into the washroom. Why aren't you doing the dishes, Parker? Because I'm doing the laundry, Dad! I can't do the dishes and the laundry at the same time. That's impossible. Speaking of impossible, he made me study for every single math test. Parker, that's not a con. That's a good thing, because actually that helps your grade. Wrong! <laughs> Incorrect! <clears throat> you can't study for a math test. It's impossible. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, the study guide could either be easier, are way harder than the test, so you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, and two, how am I supposed to practice a problem I don't know how to do? You can't. If I just sit there and stare at it for 15 minutes and then break down crying and take a nap, that's not studying. That's having an existential crisis, and that is a con. It's a big, big con. <laughs> but by far the biggest con was that I was expected to understand everything that went on in that math class, because you're the math teacher's son, obviously you'd understand what we're talking about wrong again! You're <laughs> off your game today. I didn't understand anything that went on in that class. I barely remembered what lesson we were on, much less what it was about. But people expected me to have the algebra equations just flowing out of my blood veins, just ready to jump on their paper at a moment's notice. Guess what? My dad, he's a human calculator. Yes. But guess what? I am a broken calculator. I... Why don't you just ask him? Jeez. All right. Sorry, I had a little heat there. Let's move on to this very scientific chart that I have created called the Brain Pain Index, or BPI. The BPI has two stages. It has mild pain, where my brain's like, oh, yeah, that looks stupid, but doable. These would be the equations with the letters in them. You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah, right. a squared plus b squared equals I'll see myself out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Moderate pain. These are where they took the letters and made them the majority of the problem. You know, word problems, stupid, right? My least favorite of which were the driving ones. You know, John left California at 12.30 going 200 miles an hour. His friend John followed him at 12.45 going 210 miles an hour. When will they meet up for lunch? Who cares? I don't care. Here's a better question. When are they going to get arrested for speeding? <laughs> yeah, we never get closure on that though, do we? <laughs> Finally, we have severe pain, which was caused by one thing and one thing only, and that was the Greek alphabet. Whoever put the Greek alphabet in math is dead now. And that's a good thing. Because if he was not dead, I would be sending him hate mail every single day and twice on Tuesday. 
This guy had the bright idea way back, way back, like BC times. Some Greek guy, he was like, hey Patroclus, listen. What? Face paint, listen, I have this great idea. We take the hieroglyphs and we put them with the numbers and then BAM! No one graduates high school. <laughs> you are a genius, thank you, but there's more. How could there possibly be more? Listen, we make it a required class so they possibly cannot even make it to college. You are a god! Yes, I know, thank you. Here is your Oscar, thank you, thank you. Then, of course, they went to celebrate, but guess what? His cake was poisoned. Uh, Parker, I don't think that's all that actually happened. No, wrong, I made it up, so actually it did. Um, <laughs> finally, we're gonna look at life at home. This is a dramatic interpretation of a play I created called You Didn't Do Your Homework last night, Parker. Act one, scene one. Let's begin. So, uh, Mr. Klein talked to me today. Yeah, what, what did he say? Well, he said you didn't do your homework like you were supposed to. What? <laughs> How'd that happen? You know, I asked him the same thing. And then when he came to collect the papers, he said you had lost it. Oh yeah, you know, I just couldn't find it anywhere, so I guess I have to start over. Darn. Except I was lying. I didn't do my homework last night. I was playing video games last night. And every time he came to check on me, I'd slam my laptop shut, put my math book on top of it, open a random page, and start writing. And he always bought it. And the next day in the study hall, I would just copy off a friend's paper. And, well, they weren't paying attention, and that's how I did all my homework throughout my entire high school career. Just don't tell Dad, okay? All right, thanks. <laughs> Act two, scene one. Test it. Hey, Dad, I think I did pretty good on the math test. Do you? Yeah, because I studied pretty hard, and I, I think I understood most of the material. Yeah, well, Mr. Klein talked to me today. <laughs> what, what did he say? He said you didn't do so hard on the math test. You probably should have studied a little harder. How bad was it? Was it like disown your kid level of bad, or was it like, oh, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed? Either one will make me cry, but I prefer the second. It's winter. I don't know, I guess I have to ask him tomorrow. Act three, scene one. Tomorrow. <coughs> hey, Mr. Clyde, what did I get on the math test? I don't know, I haven't graded it yet. <laughs> but, but, but Dad said you graded it last night, I didn't do super well, and I was really... Your dad's funny, and handsome, and smart. And sometimes he likes to make you nervous, because it's really funny. Oh, well, ha ha, dad, it's really funny, dad. I didn't sleep last night, dad. <laughs> Disclaimer, I don't actually beat up my dad. He doesn't beat me either. Uh, <laughs> today I talked to you about the pros and cons of what it's like to have your dad teach a class you despise. Then I talked to you about why I despise said class. And finally, we looked at life at home and what it's like to sit across the table from your parent, who's also your teacher, who also knows you didn't do any of your homework that month. I hope none of you have your teacher as your parent, but if you do, just know, I sympathize. 